Hey, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. Thank you so much for tuning into my podcast. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Um, today's episode is about how to treat thyroid. So, you know, say you go to your doctor and you're being prescribed thyroid uh, or you're already on thyroid medication. You know, is it good? Is it right? Common question. And it's a valid one. And a lot of discussion back and forth on that. And uh, so that's what I want to address because I see it a lot clinically in my practice and I see it a lot um, with your comments. And um, yeah, it's a big one. So, you know, what happens when you go to your doctor and you get prescribed thyroid? A lot of times you're prescribed Synthroid or Levothyroxine. And that's not, a, let me back up. Almost always you are prescribed Levothyroxine or Synthroid. It's rare to do others. And those of you who are on others, you know that. It's not a common thing, okay? Um, people are parked on levothyroxine or, or Synthroid, you know, and they stay there. And I don't need studies to show that they're not happy. But there are studies that show they're not happy. And that'll be in the comment section. Uh, excuse me. That'll be in the description section of this video. There'll be a, a, one of the studies that show how much people do not like being parked on levothyroxine or Synthroid and how they prefer being on a more complex therapeutic regimen, which is we're going to go into, which isn't really that complex, okay? I'm going to quote two studies here because I think that's important, but Justin, edit it out if you don't think they're important. Yeah. Um, I want to say that the fact that no one likes this ever, the New England Journal of Medicine published the effects of thyroxine as compared with thyroxine plus triiodothyronine in patients with hypothyroidism found the patients with hypothyroidism when given partial substitution of triiodothyronine, T3, uh, for thyroxine had measurably improved mood and neuropsychological function. That was New England Journal of Medicine. The Journal of Clinical Endocrinological Metabolism, which is a mouthful, even after 20 years of saying that sentence, I have a hard time naming that journal every time. Uh, they wrote that the substitution of T3 for T4 reduced body weight and resulted in greater thyroid uh, hormone action on lipid metabolism without detected differences in cardiovascular function or insulin sensitivity. So patients respond better on a better therapy than just levothyroxine or Synthroid. When you add T3 or triiodothyronine, you get the patient responds better, they feel better, they think better, their body is better. And that's what this episode is about, how to put T3 into these equations for these patients. So, you know, giving a person T4 blindly is not seeing the person for where they are. When your doctor prescribes you Synthroid or Levothyroxine, they're not really seeing you for where you are. Now, in a recent episode, we did a talk on the lab values for thyroid. And in there, I talked about the conversion of T4 into T3. Recap it real quick. T4 is a precursor hormone, okay? Levothyroxine and Synthroid is T4. That's all it is, okay? Levothyroxine and Synthroid is T4, or just thyroxine, that's the other name for it. Thyroxine does not touch cells. It does absolutely nothing. It has no biological activity until in the liver and in the muscle, it gets turned into triiodothyronine, or T3. T3 is that what does the work. That's what touches the cell and makes things happen. T3 is the most important thing we do or we look at. So when I give someone just T4 as a standalone, I'm hoping that it gets turned into T3. But often, to almost always, it barely does or it just doesn't. The lab would look good with the T4 if I just gave them Synthroid or, or Levothyroxine and I ran a lab that just tested TSH and T4, which is what they do now, and I didn't test the T3, it would look good. But does that look good mean you feel right? Not at all. Not even a little bit. Because remember, T3 does the work. Why would I just be testing just those two then? Business. Again, and I say this a lot and I'm going to repeat it again. This is not a conspiracy, and I'm not a conspiracy person, and this is not some, you know, anti the man thing. I'm not. I'm not I'm nothing like that, actually. This is business. Business is business. And insurance companies are in this for business. And big clinics, big medical centers are in this for business. And you have to see this as a business game. 
if you give someone Synthroid or Levothyroxine as a standalone medication, it's a very, very inexpensive medication. You know, we're talking maybe like four bucks for a three-month supply, I think, in some cases. It's just this wicked cheap. Because uh, I think you know, Walmart has this part of their $4 program, whatever, um, which is a good program. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying it's just it's cheap. Um, insurance barely covers it. They don't have, there's not really much they have to spend on that one. It's really cheap. The test's really cheap. And if there's a segment of the population that's not really being well treated, well, they're not going to die. And the amount of money it's going to cost me to do the free T3 and start treating with triiodothyronine as a medication, well, that's pretty expensive for them. Not super expensive. I want you to medically, this is not a million dollar protocol I'm talking about here. It's not. But it's going from $4 to say $30 a month. That's the cost. Often that's the reason. Also, using this. If you're a doctor, you're seeing someone every nine minutes, which is what they do nowadays, or if you're a nurse practitioner, or if you're a physician's assistant, and you're just hammering patients constantly, it takes this to, to figure out the T3 dose. It takes this and time to see if it worked. You're going to have a couple more appointments with the patient, and you have a little bit more time to think about the dosing and figuring it out. And that's not easy to do when you're trying to hit volume. So often, that's why. That's why. With patients, the conversion of T4 into T3 is important for us to look at with labs and it's important for us to treat in care. T4 needs to turn to T3 at a healthy rate. In a previous podcast, we talked about the lab values of T4 and T3. And I want to tell you this clear. T4 should be the upper end of the range and T3 should be the upper end of the range of the reference range, okay? That's from our previous podcast. If your T4 is in the upper end of the reference range and your T3 is the lower end of the reference range, that's poor conversion. Your T4 looks good, your TSH looks good, your T3 is down here, you don't feel good. But the doctors say, you're in the reference range. Eh, it's low though. It's not optimal. You want an optimal. You want the upper end of the range. So you want to treat that and bring that up. That conversion's everything, okay? What causes poor conversion in our patients? What could be the issue? Um, poor nutrition, uh, high stress, cortisol. Cortisol slows down that conversion T4 into T3. Um, some medications like beta blockers will do it. Um, um, uh, omeprazole, which is a you know, stomach acid inhibitor, that, that'll do it too. Um, inflammation, systemic inflammation, liver damage, uh, alcohol consumption, Fast food diet, processed food diet, these things do change that. Um, systemic illness, cancer, trauma, you know, preoperative stress, that'll, that'll do it. Um, postoperative, excuse me, postoperative state, which is, you know, your body's under stress, that'll do it. Um, elevated glucose, insulin, growth hormone deficiency. All these things affect that conversion. So when I said a minute ago, it takes this on the part of your physician, that's all the things you got to juggle. That's all the things we got to think about. And I want you to know, we're trained to do that. And we should be very good at it because that's what we do for a living. With that said, if we don't do this often, we don't stay good at it. If you're going to a clinic that doesn't do this very often, is the doctor's like, well, I've never really prescribed this before. Be cautious. These are a lot of things to juggle. It's better to try and find someone that understands that. And if they don't do this a lot, you want to see someone who has buy-in with you, that cares about you, and is going to look for all these things I just listed. You want your doctor to think about you completely with your thyroid. You want them to think about your liver. They want to think about your insulin. You want them to think about your growth hormone. You want them to think about your nutrition, your micronutritional deficiencies, your stress. That's true medicine. That's true medicine. So when a patient has poor conversion T4 to T3, I try and figure out the cause of that. And I go after the, all those reasons why in the middle to try and get this elevated on its own. Sometimes it's just going to be a slow conversion. It's not very good. And sometimes they're both really low and I need to treat. Sometimes a patient is on T4, levothyroxine or Synthroid as a medication as a standalone and they're not converting very well. That doesn't matter. There's nothing I can do in the middle to make that better. I need to give them T3 no matter what. And there's, there's, you know, their, their adrenal is fine. Everything's fine. It's just, you can't just give someone T4 and expect it to convert over. 
It doesn't always mean pathology if it's not converting over. It just means you got to give them a little T3 to help it get back up. Um, when you give a person T4 plus T3, studies show, and in, I will tell you, thousands of patients through my door in my life have shown me you have better outcomes and better quality of life every single time, every time. Why? What do they see? What happens when I give them T3? Well, as I mentioned earlier, being a podcast, you know, it's necessary for weight loss. You get better conversion, better weight loss with your patients. It's not perfect, and it doesn't solve a poor diet, right? It's not like, oh, I want to take thyroid. That happened. That happened. In the 1990s, people were like mega dosing T3, thinking you're going to lose weight. All it did was cause heart problems. And there's still clinics out there like, we'll just give you a lot of thyroid for weight loss. But let me tell you, that does not work. That does not work. It does not work as a standalone. If you're trying to lose weight, you can't just take thyroid to correct diet. It just won't work, okay? But if you're doing everything right and everything's good, your diet's good, everything's healthy, and you start thyroid, T3, optimizing it, published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinological Metabolism, optimizing thyroid improves weight loss up to 12 pounds, up to 12 pounds. That doesn't mean always 12 pounds, but it goes up to 12 pounds of weight loss when you get thyroid normalized, you get the T3 optimized. Think about that. That's just all it is. Just your thyroid in those cases. What other things are benefit of getting that T3 up in a better place? It decreases arrhythmias. Everyone always, in medical school, are always drilled down, thyroid's gonna cause heart problems. They didn't really talk about how thyroid prevents heart problems either. You know, so a lot of doctors didn't learn this till later on, you know, out in the field and you're starting to read the research and seeing out there, this, this is new, a lot of this stuff. And it's important that we know this. Optimizing thyroid really helps your heart and it prevents heart attacks. It prevents arrhythmias. It gives you better outcomes for if you have a heart attack. So how do we treat? How do we get them in there? If the person comes in there on levothyroxine and, and, and um, Synthroid, you know, either we're going to add them uh, T3 separately, triiodothyronine. We'll give them a prescription of something called Cytomel, and they'll add that to their T4. I'll lower their dose of levothyroxine a little bit, and I'll give them a little bit of T3 in there, and I'll run the labs about a month later. That's one way of approaching it. Sometimes you just start them off on desiccated thyroid, and this is going to be an awkward moment in my podcast history because this is going to be awkward. Ready? I've been debating how I want to talk about this for months, dead serious, months. I want to talk about this. When I talk about estrogen, I always talk about how estrogen that's derived from horse urine is awful. And it still is because it's derived from horse urine. Okay. It's not good. You should never do estrogen derived from horse urine. Okay. That's Premarin. Desiccated thyroid is sourced from a pig. <laughs> Armor thyroid and nature thyroid. Uh, MP thyroid, there's no nature thyroid on the market anymore, sorry. MP thyroid, these are medications that are derived from grass-fed pigs. It comes from their actual gland. Why is it that I'll say that's okay as opposed to horse urine estrogen? These are more biologically identical to humans. They're completely biologically identical to humans. Desiccated thyroid is the same thyroid hormone that we make. Horse urine thyroid, excuse me, horse urine estrogen, Premarin, is not the same as human estradiol. There's some molecular similarities, but it's different enough to trigger cancer in some cases, another pathology. That's why it's bad. So desiccated thyroid that comes from, from pig, from porcine, these, sounds fancier to call porcine derived, but that's just basically pig derived. It's not, it's not the same and it's not pathological. Why are we using pig? Thyroid for humans, <laughs> good question. There's something called protomorphogen theory that was popular in the eight, late 1800s. Um, and the idea was, and I think it was originally derived from Native Americans, is, is that by eating the gland of an animal where you're having pathology, you regenerate that gland within yourself. That's protomorphogen theory. And that's where it all originated. And you know, over time, we realized what they were taking, they were taking the thyroid gland and it was helping people with thyroid, they started understanding that that's the reason why I was working is because there's actually, met, there's actually hormone inside the gland and it was benefiting those people. That's how we started understanding this. One of the ways endocrinology kind of evolved was that observational thing and where people would take, eat some of the adrenal of, of, of you know, a deer. They get that cortisol. They go, what, what, is, what is this? Well, that's because of that. So it's, it was a, one of those observational things and it just stayed with us. It's around. 
so some patients, I'll just put them on desiccated thyroid, Armour thyroid or, or NP thyroid. And if they're on levothyroxine, we discontinue levothyroxine. We put them on Armour or we put them on uh, uh, NP. And that has a ratio of T4 and T3 in there that benefits the patient. And we run the labs about a month later to verify it brought the T3 in the optimal end of the range and it brought the T4 in the optimal end of the range. The third way of approaching it is... There are things called compounding pharmacies, for those of you who don't know. And those are pharmacies that can make a custom medication for you, specific to your biological needs. Um, say you have a food allergy, or say you have a specific type of medication or method that has to be delivered to you. It can be compounded and made specific for you. So sometimes, we as physicians will rely on using them to make a custom medication for a patient. It sounds great to make a custom thyroid for you. Say you need only 100 micrograms of T4 and you need three micrograms of T3, that's perfect for you. And I send out a compounding pharmacy and they make me 100 capsules of it, and send it home with you and you got a 100, 100 day supply of it. You know, you go pick it up from your pharmacy, throw it through your insurance, you're good. There's a real big problem here and I want you to know is that when you do thyroid, we're talking about micrograms, which is like grains of sand. And I need to put the right amount of grains of sand inside of a capsule for you. And it is so easy to make a mistake. I had a patient and it took me a while to figure her thyroid out. She's one of my early patients and I hope she's watching. So if it, I'm, you know who you are if you're watching this. <laughs> I love you. Because um, she stays, she's so patient. I, she's a really good person. So... I got her stable on her thyroid and she was, you know, executive at a, a, a one of the larger internet tech companies. Uh, and she would fly out to see me. She's, you know, I loved her. She's a great person. Thyroid impacted her cognitive function so much. Everyone impacts cognitive. And so really it was important to get that T3 optimal and it was working. I had a perfect, it was great. And I remember that. I remember she's, I hope you're watching this, you know, uh, and then all of a sudden it stopped. And she's like, what the heck? And it took so long to get everything right because we had to use diet, lifestyle. There are a lot of things to fix to get her thyroid to be optimized and running correctly. And she's like, what on earth is this? Is this? Is this? So I was like, man, we just run the lab. So I run the lab and all of a sudden the T3 is dropping. And I'm like, I don't know why it's dropping. Let me give you more T3 right now and figure out what else could be happening, why the conversion is not working. I kept adding T3 to the prescription to the compounding pharmacy. She was at five micrograms, I went to eight micrograms, I went to 10 micrograms, I went to 15 micrograms. At one point I had 25 micrograms of, of T3 in her, in her compounded T4, T3 complex. And I kept the T4 100 the whole time. She only up to 25 micrograms of T3 in there. And, and I remember getting her lab report back on a Friday and it was late. So I called her Friday night and I said, you know, your T3 is still low. And she's like, we keep increasing it every month and now it's still low again. What is this? I was like, I don't know. So she's like, I need a prescription Monday. So, you know, for Monday, I was like, well, let me let me contact the pharmacy. And we called them up and uh, that night I left a message. The next morning I got a phone call from the pharmacist. And um, this is important. The patient had been using a pharmacy for a while now. And that pharmacy was not going to, a compounding pharmacy was not going to be open on the weekend. I called it into another compounding pharmacy. This is an important part. The compounding pharmacy I called into this time, she had gotten it from them, you know, about a year before. And now I'm at this new dose calling them in. And the pharmacist called me on Saturday morning. I'll never forget this. And she goes, you know, Brendan, you increased the dose significantly on this from the last time she was in here. You know, what's up? And I explained it to her. I was like, well, she's, I'm constantly having to increase her dose, man. I don't know why I'm increasing her dose. Nothing's right. It doesn't make sense. I, I went over her conversion. Everything should be right. And she filled me on a dirty little secret that I had no idea. When they make thyroid and compounding facilities, they T3 and T4, sometimes they'll get lazy. And they'll make a big batch of T3. And what will happen is the medication will sort and it'll sift through to the bottom of the jug and it'll almost be like if you look at it the very bottom has a lot of t3 and the rest of this is methyl cellulose which is basically from cabbage so my patient was getting her capsules and it had inert medicine in it because it wasn't properly mixed at the compounding pharmacy not all compounding pharmacies are bad but this is one of the ones i don't mess around with because 
thyroid, when it's hyperdosed, can kill you. If you give someone a hyperdose of thyroid, yeah, that's not safe. This is one of the ones you've got to be careful of. And as I mentioned earlier, these are grains of sand we're basically measuring. You want it to be precise. So when it comes to compounding, I almost never compound thyroid because the chance of them making a mistake is very high. And I know plenty of clinics that have been, excuse me, plenty of compounding pharmacies were closed because what they did was dangerous and it was lazy. It was lazy. It was lazy on their part. So please be aware of that. The final way to treat this is to give someone just T3. So we're not going to give them T4. If you're on, say, on levothyroxine or Synthroid, I take you off of that and I just put you on Cytomel, which is the brand name for T3. That's bad. And that was a fad for a while. It was very popular. There's people who wrote these things about how, you know, just ramp it up and give them high levels of it and all this stuff. And I'll tell you, clinically, that's dangerous. You know, I'm not going to mince words with that one. Um, it's not a good therapy. And why I'm saying that, labs don't support it. And long-term care with those patients, it never worked. They believe that by ramping up your T3 in waves, it would somehow or another regenerate your thyroid. Doesn't that sound, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, it is crazy. Don't trust us. <laughs> you hear this, don't be careful with your physicians. You know, this. You want your doctor to prove the stuff they're going to do. They want the doctor to explain it to you in a scientific way that makes sense and use lab work to verify it's going to do what they say it does. So standalone T3, I'll tell you now, not a great idea. But even so, run the lab to verify you had benefit with it or not. I hope that was helpful. Your comments mean everything to me because we use that to drive this podcast. Justin and I read your comments. I try and respond to them. I don't always get to every single one of them, but they matter to me and they're important. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.